Beloved brother and most respected elders, mothers and sisters of the pitfalls of the human makeup is that man is ungrateful. قال تعالى وعمل آل داود شكرا وقليلا من عبادي الشكور Very few of my servants are thankful. Very few of them are grateful. And it is part of this ingratitude that me and you do not recognize the favor of Allah Rabbul Izza upon us in the person of the Prophet alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim. The Muslims as a whole have forgotten what favor Allah Rabbul Izza bestowed upon them by sending them Muhammad Mustafa alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim as the prophet of this nation. I want to give you certain little glimpses of who this Rasul is in the sight of his Lord and what he did for me and you. In the narrations on Isra and Mi'raj, It narrates that Jibreel alayhi salam brought the Buraq to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Buraq is a mount of our Prophet and it was a mount of the Prophets that preceded our Prophet. So the Rasul brought the Prophet, uh, the Buraq, uh, Jibreel brought the Buraq for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the precipice of the masjid. So some of the narration state when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is introduced to the Buraq and told that this is your mount and you will be riding this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose to mount the Buraq. He came to get on the Buraq. But the Buraq bucked. You know when a horse bucks, it kicks its hind legs and moves sideways. So the Buraq bucked. So Jibreel held it from its mane, like put his hand on the back of the animal and he said, Ya Buraq, O oh Buraq, don't you know that there is not another creation more honored upon Allah than the one about to mount you? And then, Abi Muhammad in Taf'alu Hadha, will you this to, do this to Muhammad? Don't you know that there is not another creation more honored upon Allah than this one? So the Aqwal say that the Buraq blushed to the level that it started to sweat and then the sweat began to drip Haya'an that oh my God what did I do to the best of the creation of Allah Rabbul Izz the animal understood the mount understood will me and you understand and will the Ummah understand that Allah Rabbul Izz has sent us a prophet Search the entirety of the Quran. Start from Fatiha and end at Nas. Go through the pages of the blessed words of Allah Rabbul Izzah. You will notice that Allah Rabbul Izzah, when He summons Nuh, He summons him directly by His name. Ya Nuh, ihbit bi salamin minna. And when he, when he Azza wa Jal, all the prophets, Ya Zakariya, inna nubashiruka bi ghulamin ismuhu Yahya. Ya Yahya, khudhil kid, direct by their names. Ya Yahya, khudhil kitab bi quwa. Ya Musa, inni istafaytuka lil nas. Ya Isa, aanta qulta lil nas. Directly by their names. Except when it comes to our Rasul. And in our cultures, you know the culture, alhamdulillah, you're all from the subcontinent. You, in the cultures, the person you honor and love and respect more, you give titles and don't call by the name. So your father, you don't call him Muhammad. You call him Abba or Abati or Father or Beloved Father. Your teacher, you call Ustaz. Your Sheikh, you call Sheikh. You go Allama. You know, and mashallah, you guys are really good in the names title thing. So for the Rasul, when Allah Rabbul Izzah summons him, he says, Ya ayyuhal muzzammil. 
O oh, you who are covered. Ya ayyuhal muddathir. O oh, wrapped one up. Ya ayyuhal nabi. O oh, my messenger. Ya ayyuhal rasul. And never in the entirety of the Quran will you find Allah Rabbul Izza call the name of the Prophet except when he confers upon him the honor of prophethood. Muhammadur Rasulullah. The only, when he's identifying him for the office of prophethood, he identifies clearly. So you don't, you know, who was this man? Muhammadur Rasul. Ma kana Muhammadin aba ahadin min rijalikum walakir Rasulullah. Only when he is conferring upon him the office of prophethood or the office of Risala does he identify him by the name. Apart from that, Allah Rabbul Izza Jalla Jalalul Malik Allah Rabbul Izza does not address the Prophet by his name directly. And you read the Quran and you find how the other Prophets that preceded the Rasul, their relationship with their Lord and the affection and love that Allah Rabbul Izza had with them. So Musa alayhi salam was called and Musa is the kaleem of Allah. Subhanallah, can you imagine from the creation one that would speak to Allah direct. <laughs> so there's an appointment that Musa alayhi salam has to the meeting of his Lord, but he arrived early. So he explains, وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى Oh Lord, I rushed so that you could be pleased. I came early for your pleasure. When that same river is used, Allah, for our Prophet, Allah Rabbul Izza says, وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ لِتَرْضَى Allah will grant you until you are pleased, O Muhammad. Ibrahim alayhi salam came and said, describing his Lord, you know, describing Allah, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي ثُمَّ يَهْدِينَ The one who created me and guided me. And he continues and he says, وَالَّذِي يَطْمَأُ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ My Lord is the one in whom I have hoped that he will forgive me my sins in the day of judgment. So Ibrahim, who is the Khalil of Allah, is hopeful that when I stand be between the hands of the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'al al-Lima Yurid, Allah Rabbul Izza will up to forgive me. He is hopeful. And for our Prophet Allah Rabbul Izza says, لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ Already you're forgiven, O Muhammad, your first and your last. You see, this is the honor and the status that Allah Rabbul Izza has given this Rasul. And he attests to every aspect of the Prophet in the Quran and seals it with the seal of approval and confirmation. He says about the eyes of the Prophet, مَا زَاغَ الْبَصَرُ وَمَا طَغَى Can you imagine he, what his eyes saw we confirm? وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى His tongue doesn't speak of his own desires. مَا كَذَبَ الْفُؤَادُ مَا رَأَى His intellect will, will not falter. عَلَّمَهُ الشَّدِيدُ الْقُوَى His teacher is the one mighty and power confirmed, you know, attested to. And then Allah Rabbul Izza looked at the entirety of the Rasul and said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Verily thou art, O Muhammad, on the highest pinnacle of character. You see, this is the maqam of the Rasul. عَلَيْهِ أَفْضَلُ الصَّلَاةُ وَأَتَمُّ التَّسْلِيمِ Jibreel took him to Masjid Al-Aqsa. All the Prophets have gathered. Can you, uh, can you imagine? Ibrahim is there, the Khalil of Allah. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا The Khalil of Allah is there. The Kaleem of Allah, Musa, is there. Isa, Ruh Allah is there. The, uh, the, the Prophets are there. But who will be the Imam of the Anbiya? So Jibreel brings him to the place, Maqam of, of the Imam. And he pushes him forward, lead the prophets in salah. A symbol that all the faiths that have come prophetic and divine will now surrender their leadership to you, O Prophet. So any deen that preceded you will now have to convert to your deen. And listen to the verse. Allah Rabbul Izza says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ 
ثم جاءكم رسول مصدق لما معكم لا تؤمنون به ولا تنصرونه قال أأقررتم وأخذتم على ذلكم إصري قالوا أقررنا قال فاشهدوا وأنا معكم من الشاهدين when Allah رب العزة at the point of you know giving prophethood to the prophets and taking a covenant from them he Azza wa Jal says if you live as in if your mission is still there and you're still around and that prophet come and وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِثَاقَ لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ ثُمَّ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مُصَدِّقٌ لِمَا مَعَكُمْ And then if that prophet will come, لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ وَلَتَنْصُرُنَّهِ You will believe in him and you will help him. And he didn't leave. أَأَقَرَرْتُمْ Do you make إقرار of this? Do you confirm this? قَالُوا أَقَرَرْنَا قَالَ فَشْهِدُوا they said, we, we testify, when he comes and we are alive, we will submit the reign of leadership to him, believe and follow and support. All the prophets, this is condition of their prophethood. Now test, bear the testimony and I bear testimony on this with you. Be a shahid and I am a shahid with you. That when he come, Muhammad Mustafa, and your office is still there, as in your prophet, you know, you're still alive. Submit the prophethood to him and become uh, a believer in him and a supporter of him. Do you see? This is Muhammad Rasulullah. The Arabs say it beautifully. Uh, I won't be able to translate. This is a shortcoming on my end. It says, Whoever out of, uh, the language is too limited. Out of the love of Allah Rabbul Izzah for him, he linked his name next to his name. You hear it every time the Mu'azzin says, Ashhadu. So, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. What is next? Ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. So, this is our Prophet. And there isn't a good in your life except that it is out of the insistence and the dua and the struggle and the sweat and blood and tears of this Rasul. Where were you before Islam came? Wallahi, go search your history. Go see, see what you were on before Islam came. And Islam came to you because of the striving and the struggling and the sweat and blood and tears of this man. Once they saw him distressed on tears, and he says, would that I could meet my brothers. So they said, aren't we your brothers? He said, no, you're my companions. My brothers will come generations after people believing in me, having never seen me. Have you met a person who would have cried for you, having not, you not even being born at the time? I mean, you have great grandchildren coming, inshallah, Allah give you long lives. But uh, do you, do, does anyone, young man at this stage, think you are a protect you know, my great-grandchildren. No, it's, 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 it's somewhere far off in your image. But the Rasul, حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمُ One day he's in Salah, عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم. And he's crying. صدد العرش المجيد فعال لما يريد. Told Jibreel, go to Muhammad, وسله ما يبكيه. And ask him what is making him cry. And Allah, رب العزة, knows the first and the last. So Jibreel came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to see what makes the Rasul cry. And he coming to the presence of the Rasul, he find him crying and saying, اللهم أمتي أمتي. Oh Allah, what about my Ummah? Oh Allah, what about my Ummah? Oh Allah, my Ummah. So Jibreel went back to the 
ذُلْ عَرْشِ الْمَجِيدِ فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدِ يَا رَبْ He is saying, اللهم أمتي أمتي So Allah Rabb al-Izzah says, go to him and tell him, we will satisfy you, we will please you with regards to your Ummah, ya Muhammad, and we will not disgrace you. That is enough for you Muslim. It is enough that you have the Rasul crying on your behalf. It is enough that Allah Rabbul Izza says, we will please you with, Wallahi the Rasul will not be happy with a single one of you going to Jahannam. He says in the night of Isra and Mi'raj, Uridat al umam, the nations were presented to me at the door of Jannah. So it is paraded before him and he says, I saw a prophet enter Jannah with less than 10 people. And I saw a prophet enter Jannah with two people and I saw a prophet enter Jannah alone. As in they have spent their whole lives and prophets don't come to joke around. The prophets, their mission is a mission, you know, they're accountable to their Lord. Uh, Nuh alayhi salam, just to give you a glimpse of, of what prophets do. Qala Rabbi inni da'awtu qawmi laylan wa nahara. Ya Rabb, I preach to my people night and day. Prophets are on a perpetual mission. So, uh, and he, all forms of da'wah, Rabbi inni da'awtuhum jihara. I called out to them loudly. Thumma inni a'lantu lahum. لهم إصرارا. Then I said to them gently and quietly, sirran in their ears, you know, all sorts of da'wah. فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانْ Repent to your Lord, your Lord is more of forgiving. Prophets are on a perpetual da'wah. So the prophets have, you know, done whole life of da'wah, but not a single person has gone on their belief with them. So for the du'a, those who are in the da'wah, don't chase fruits, do the work. Don't get tired. Tired is not in our bloodline. Yeah, persist, struggle, keep going. Smile, happy that the Lord is watching. The boss, is, you know, he's doing your hours for you. The payment will come. So some prophets entered, he says, Jannah alone. And then I saw Sawadin Azim, a huge multitude of black. In reference to the dark hairs, you know, as in heads. So uh, lots of people. So the Prophet وسلم, looking at Jibreel, you know, who are these? So Jibreel says, this is Musa wa qawmu. This is Musa and his people. But the Prophet is harisun alaykum bil mu'mineen ra'oof rahim His whole thought and concern is, is where's, where's my ummah? Where's the ummah al maymuna Where's the ummah of the Prophet? So Jibreel recognizes and he says, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad, Undur ila al ufuq look at the horizon. So he goes, I looked, Fa bisawadin azim, and I saw a huge multitude in the horizon. And then Jibreel says, Undur ila al ufuq look at that horizon. And then Fa bisawadin azim, and I saw a huge multitude. And then Jibreel says, This, Ya Muhammad, is your ummah. And from them 70,000 will enter Jannah bila hisab in wala adab. 70,000 will enter Jannah without hisab in adab. Now you think, now the Muslims walillahi alhamdu wal minna are 1,600 million Muslims. 70,000 is small. You know, 70,000, but what the Ummah, you know, this will continue till Qiyamah come. But the Rasul is harisun alaykum. The Prophet is insistent for khair for you. You know, like a mother comes to visit those annoying type of mothers. May Allah protect you, Arab. She's got a son and uh, she's sitting on the, on the dining table in your house and she gets this ice cream and this food and puts it in front of the puttar. You know, have, you have this and eat this and, and so on. This is haris. Here, here. The Prophet is haris over you for my ummah, for my ummah, for my ummah. Haris. So the Rasul says, I asked my Lord to increase it. From what? From the 70,000 that will enter Jannah bila hisab wala adab. Increase it, Ya Rabb. So he says, for every thousand, I give you another 70,000. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ for every thousand, I give you another thousand. And then Umar ibn al-Khattab is sitting in, 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 the, in the majlis. And then the Rasul says, 
and three handfuls. So when he heard three handfuls, Umar said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah, three handfuls as in the three handfuls of the Dhul Arsh al Majid, so we are safe. Do you understand that the Prophet وسلم, seeks khair for you and whatever khair that is in your life is because of the teachings of the Rasul or the Sunnah of the Rasul or the Dua of the Rasul or the insistence of the Rasul. It is about time that the Ummah become appreciative of the, of the, of the Prophet. And it is a condition of Iman for us Muslims. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده وولده وفي رواية أنا الزاد فيه والناس أجمعين. You are not considered full believers until I, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is more beloved to you than your father and your child in another hadith, humanity in its entirety. To love the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to you know, to live in love of the Rasul is the requirement. And then the confusion starts, how do you love the Rasul? Obey the Prophet. Obedience is love. The Allah Rabbul Izzah makes it a condition of his love to follow the Rasul. Qul, in kuntum tuhibboon Allah, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. Say, if you love Allah, follow me, he will love you. This is not the Prophet saying him, so Allah told them, I will love them if they become like you. So, Qul, in kuntum tuhib, fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. So follow the teachings of the Rasul. And Muslims, please don't narrow the teachings of the Rasul. Don't limit the Sunnah to the beard and the siwak. Don't limit the Sunnah to Rafal Yadain. The Sunnah is the entirety of life. The Prophet وسلم, he was honest in his work. Learn to be honest at your work. Learn to be honest when you talk. Learn to be honest when you do business deals. Learn to be honest when you keep your promise. The Prophet ﷺ never broke a promise. Sadiq al Wa'd al Amin. He never, in, in his childhood, before Islam, a person told him, Come meet me here, we're going to build this. He went there one day, waited all day, the man didn't come, went back, came back next day, waited all day, the man didn't come. Third day, he came there, waited, because this is the sunnah of the Rasul that he would keep his appointment. Oh, uh, you know, after. Uh, the battle of Uhud, the Quraysh promised we will meet again next year on battlefield. The Prophet went out in the thick of summer. He waited there for three days or a week and the Quraysh didn't come but the Prophet's word would not break. So don't break your appointments Muslims. I will be here at three o'clock. Khalas the man, the poor man is there seven o'clock and you know, uh, you haven't rocked up. This is the sunnah of the Rasul. Eat with your right hand. Be good to your parents. Be good to your neighbors. Be good to your neighbors. The Prophet ﷺ went out of his way. The Ashab say he insisted so much on the rights of neighbors. We thought that they will become heirs to our property. This is the sunnah of the Be clean. Be clean. The Prophet ﷺ was immaculately clean. Where? In the desert where there's no water. You have a little tap, you touch it, cold water comes, hot water comes, alhamdulillah. In the desert where there is no water, they used to go get water to do what? To wash. Where you buy perfumes nice and simple, you know, you spray, life is good. They used to go and buy their raw perfumes and you see the hadith of Hajj, Aisha radiallahu anha says, I put the misk on his, on his blessed beard and you could see the granules in his beard. The perfume. You could trace the Rasul from his scent. Do you give off the best? Do you make a room pleasant when you walk in? Have you got enough perfume on? That's the sunnah of the Rasul. How was your oral hygiene? It's the sunnah of... Wallahi Aisha radiallahu anha says he used to put a siwak next to himself in bed. 
when his head's on the pillow. And then he used to wake up, like, you know, as he's turning around, so he used to pull this suwak, clean, put it back. A man so insistent on hygiene. A Muslim should not have a bad odor about him. Umar ibn al-Khattab says, if you spend a third of your wealth on perfumes, do it, it is not israf. Because you're supposed to be pleasant. Do not take joy in being rough and rugged. It's not the requirement. The requirement is to win hearts and minds with your conduct, in your character, in your presentation, in your personality, and your and, and everything that is about you. And wallahi, I say this, and this is my a'tiqad. If you follow the sunnah of the Prophet as it was the murad of Allah and the murad of the Rasul, you can't help but enter the hearts of people. This is the best of the creation. You cannot get a better role model than the Rasul. So my dear brothers, you cannot follow you cannot follow a person if you don't know the person. So learn about your prophet. You can't follow till you know. You won't follow till you love. So for both of them, Learn about the Prophet till you know the Prophet. When you know the Prophet, you love the Prophet. When you love the Prophet, you'll follow the Prophet. And if, you, if the Rasul's life comes in your life, then Hani, Allah, you have done well. My time has come to its end. May Allah Rabbul Izzah accept this little um, khutbah. Um, خالصا لوجهه تبارك وتعالى and save us from all the shortcomings um, that is part of the human nature.